Review Wednesday, and today I'm going to be looking at the eighth installment of a series of unfortunate events. Uh, and this book is titled The Hostile Hospital. Um, and uh, not only is it the eighth book within the series, but it also offers something rather interesting than what we've seen in the previous installments, as I will explain. Um, also, I want to say, if you haven't seen any of my previous videos up until now, uh, where I do discuss all of the previous books, starting with the first book, uh, I suggest you watch those before watching this video so that you are not confused. But uh, without further ado, this book basically starts where uh, the sixth book left off. And the interesting thing now is that unlike the previous installments where the Baudelaire's are basically sent to another location to where they are lived and where to where they live and they're basically taken care of by somebody, uh, in this one they are on the run. Um, and uh, they are ultimately accused of a crime, which if you read the sixth book you will completely understand what I mean by that. And um, as they are on the run, they come across the uh, volunteers fighting diseases. And basically, they end up picking the, up the Baudelaire's. And they are taken to the Heimlich Hospital. And basically, they are given jobs there and do various paperwork and things like that. Um, and basically, uh, an essential part of this story involves um, sort of diving again into their past, and you'll see how one particular file uh, holds somewhat of a significance to discovering sort of what happened to their parents and things like that. So um, that's something important to, I think, note when it comes to um, this particular story and unlike some of the previous books where they are trying to um, basically help out the um, quagmires that uh, that end up appearing within the fifth and sixth book uh, they're sort of uh, in the survival mode for themselves um, because you'll see how eventually Count Olaf ends up coming into the picture and how ultimately one of the Baudelaire's is captured and how the other siblings try to save the one sibling that is kidnapped. And there's all these different scenarios that end up taking place and new characters are introduced and we ultimately end up seeing how they play a role in the plot. But that's really the story in a nutshell. And what's also interesting, too, is, is unlike previous installments where there was sort of a clear ending as far as where things were going, um, like you could see, okay, this place didn't work out for them, on to the next. Whereas here, it ends very in a, to, in a very to-be-continued sort of fashion um, because uh, they are kind of... Uh, on the edge and have nowhere else to ultimately go. So, and you'll sort of see what I mean by that if you choose to read the book. Now, I think for an eighth installment, this holds up fairly well because it does, again, give us a different environment. You know, they're in a, they're in a hospital, they're in a place that you usually wouldn't see kids at. Um, they are kind of not uh, taken care of by a caretaker uh, in any way so much as they are just given tasks to do. Um, and at the same time, um, there is this uh, repetitious factor of Count Olaf always wanting to come in and screw things up for them, uh, which he does within this book too. So that maintains 
that seems to be relatively the same. Um, but despite that, it seems like that Count Olaf's uh, part within this story is sort of to excuse me to be continued uh, to be continued uh, portion as well because you will see how ultimately the children sort of have to um, be in some way, shape, or form uh, at his not. Uh, not at his complete disposal, but at the same time, they end up having to resort to uh, using him as a means of es as a, of escape. And you'll see what I mean uh, when you choose to read the story. Um, but ultimately, I think that's really all I can say about this eighth installment. It has some interesting parts to it. Um, there are a little bit of twists and turns, and it's nice to see them trying to ultimately kind of piece things together as far as, um, as, as, far as what happened to their parents. Um, and it's nice to see uh, this kind of an ending where you kind of don't really know where it's ultimately heading. Um, and uh, you could argue that the seventh book also uh, left itself maybe somewhat of a of a cliffhanger but at the same time I feel like this one is even more uh, even more intriguing only by the fact that you know you kind of don't really ultimately end up knowing what really uh, w where ultimately they're going to be led to um, and uh, I think that's really why this one I think stands out to me uh, but it's definitely an entertaining one uh, and an interesting one um, but yeah I think that's really ultimately all I can say about without giving too much away as you can see they're getting a little bit more uh, extensive as far as um, the plot and story is concerned um, they do get bigger um, but uh, we still have the 9th, the 10th, the 12th, and I believe the 13th to go. But but so far, it is sort of drifting into this um, kind of new territory here. Um, and it sort of provides a, a, an introduction to that because, again, there's no... Um, there's no person, really, the Baudelaire's can really turn to but themselves. Um, and they're not being kind of passed around anymore. They're kind of on their own now. So I think that's something that this book touches on fairly well. Uh, but yeah, I think that's really ultimately all I can say when it comes to this particular book. Uh, if there are any questions, comments, concerns, I'd be more than happy to answer them. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a pleasant day day, week, month, and year, and I hope to see you on the next video. Take care. Bye.